Hi, my name is Tendo. I'm a uh, data analyst and I'm presenting to you today for my Google Capstone data analysis project. So uh, thank you so much for clicking on the video and I would love to get into it. So today we're looking at cyclistic. So cyclistic is a, uh, so firstly, before we get into it, um, of course, I said, my name is Tendo. And uh, if you'd like to reach out to me, you can uh, various um, contact points. I have my LinkedIn there posted as well as my Kaggle where you are able to view this project as well. If you'd like to look through the actual notation and the code that I use to perform it, um, as well as my email address if you'd like to get a hold of me for anything else. All right, so let's get into it. Now, the, pro the project I looked at was for a company, it was a make-believe company named Cyclistic. Um, so they are a bike sharing company and they launched in 2016 uh, they launched with, uh, with a, I guess a successful bike sharing offering and uh, since then ha the program has grown to a fleet of over 5,000 uh, units or bicycles uh, 5,824 and they are geo-tracked and locked into a network of 692 stations across Chicago the bikes can be locked from one station and returned to any other station in the system. There are two types of cyclists, those who purchase casual tickets and those who purchase annual memberships. The marketing team believes that maximizing the number of annual memberships will be key to future growth. Rather than creating a marketing campaign that targets all new customers, there is a very good chance to convert casual customers, casual riders into members. So my job or my position in this project is to work in the marketing team and to help solve this problem. So the specific question that the whole marketing team is looking at is what is the most effective marketing strategy of converting cyclistics casual riders to annual memberships? And then from that, to drill down into it, my specific question and what I'll be looking at today in this project is how do annual members and casual riders use cyclistic bikes differently? All right, so with that in mind, let's get into the findings. So what was it that the data was able to tell us? So rides over the week, we have two different, uh, of course, groups here between casual and um, annual members. Now, what that shows us in this graph is that the Monday to Friday, we do see a pretty steady go with the annual members using this service at a very uniform time. Um, and, and in terms of number of rides taken by individuals, it's very uniform. So there's no more, no less on average in terms of the people participating over the week. Uh, whereas the casuals, you do see uh, some, some dips during the week, mainly, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, an increase in Friday, but usually Saturday and Sunday is where we see the biggest peak. Uh, and that is showing that the casuals tend to use the service a lot more, it seems, during the weekend. Um, so we can get into that a little later with our findings. Uh, so the rides per month, so when we take a step back and we look at the rides over uh, a month taken by the customers, both casual and annual, we do see something even more interesting. So this uh, sort of view from the week extrapolates further back into a month and we look at the seasons, or at least from January, we do see a very, very low turnout between both the casual and the annual members. But as the year progresses, by the time we get to the sixth, seventh, and eighth month of the year, now that is the summertime in Chicago. So that is your June, May, June, July, and August. And there tends to be a lot more people frequenting and using the service. It would make the most sense as this is a bike service that operates outside. Uh, the weather does play an important part of it. Uh, so that would definitely be a deterrence. And in Chicago in January and February, it is very cold and very windy. Um, so it is definitely unlikely anyone would be using the service as much during those months. And especially in December, November, as there would be quite a bit of snow and make it very difficult for anyone to actually use it. Now, when we look at the sixth and seventh month, we do see casual members using the service 
more so than they do uh, than the annual members and this could contribute to the time of year of course like i said it is june july so that is summer that may be because there's a lot more travel at that time within continental us it may also contribute to um, the fact that there are tourists, a lot more tourism would definitely occur when it is a lot warmer in certain cities and certain places and Chicago would be one of those places. So I would not be, uh, this, this report suggests that there may be a, a, a connection between that, um, the, the weather being pleasant at this time of the year um, and travel being a lot more frequent at this time of the year. And then that may inspire to a certain degree the amount of casuals who are taking, who are taking advantage of the service in the, in the over a calendar year. All right, so the next is just average time spent using the service. So this w looks at, of course, how long are the trips on average between annual members and casual members. And it is very interesting to find that the casual members use it a lot longer on average than the uh, annual members do. So the annual members tend to have a more uniform uh, trip time on average, uh, regardless of the day of the week. And that may contribute uh, to the fact that they are using it more so for their daily commute. Um, it's actually to get to and from, from home to work or, or and vice versa. So the, the trip and the distance does not change. So their time spent using the service probably wouldn't change either. Um, whereas the casual member, we do see that they may not be using the service specifically to commute to and from work. It may just be to go uh, to, to site C, of course, like I said in the previous slide, to uh, run errands, but the time might not be, uh, at, you know, it may take two hours, may take three, depending on that. It doesn't necessarily have to be constrained. So that might be what these, this data is, is uh, projecting to us. We would want a lot more just to make sure we were very accurate with regards to the data points. Uh, but as what we do have to look at, this seems to be the case. All right, and then last but not least, we do look. We did also look at which bike was the most popular. So, like I said, there are three offerings that Cyclistic has. So, a classic bike, a docked bike, and an electric bike. So, the docked bike, uh, as we see here in this graph, is the least popular bike uh, type that is utilized. It is absolutely not touched by the annual members um, and only partially touched by casual members. Um, so this may be just due to the fact that dock bikes in nature are specifically uh, allow the user to lock the bike up, but not, not having to lock it up back at another station, but instead have the ability to use a regular lock that is provided on the docked bike um, and use it throughout the day, run errands, you lock it up and chain it up at a regular bike rack lock, you still use the service whilst it's outside of its docking station, of course. And then once your trip is complete, you've returned the bike back to the docking station. That is when the trip is over. So it seems as though because that might be the nature of the usage of a dock bike that the actual annual members may not have any use for it. Like they, like we've agreed or what was stated previously, their trip time is very uniform. They're less likely to be using it super superfluously um, and you know making multiple stops now the classic bike we do see a lot more use of the classic bike even compared to the electric bike unfortunately there isn't enough that the data can um, lend to the this insight as to why it may just be the what is available so it may just be the bikes the classic bikes uh there are more prevalent uh, per station. It might also be just the electric bikes themselves are less popular, maybe a bit more troublesome, or it could just be the pricing between all three models that might be an, have an effect on the decision by between each customer. So when we look at the findings uh, and we summarize a lot of the information here, we see that casual users tended to ride more so in the warmer months of Chicago, namely June to August. Their participation exceeded that of the long-term numbers, like I stated earlier, and that played into the fact that there is a lot more usage by the 
um, um, overall by it could be tourism, it could be the fact that it is a lot warmer as well uh, for the casual users to actually take advantage of the service. Whereas if you are a annual member, regardless of the season, you would just be using it to commute back and forth. So there would be no real change in your usage regardless of the season. And especially that maybe you would be using it more in the summer as well, as there was seen shown an increase on average by both types. And that just may be a translation of the fact that it is a lot easier to ride at that time of the year. To further that, the casual demographic spent on average a lot longer time per ride on their long term compared to the long term counterparts. So the casual demographic, yes, spent a lot more time using the service. And that may just again be because it is a surplus. They're not using it um, for specific time and it's not constrained and they are just taking it uh, uh, as a as an option for transportation, but it is not necessary to get them to from A to B at a specific time. So the days of the week also further show that the casual riders prefer to use a service during the weekends as their usage peak then the long term members conversely utilize the service throughout the typical work week Monday to Friday. Um, and then long term riders tended to stick to classic bikes as opposed to docked or electric bikes, this might suggest more available classic bikes, the pricing between each option might be a factor as well, I was also um, speaking on that as well. Um, so that, of course, speaks to the fact that there may also be more options for pricing that we aren't able to look at specifically at this study or at this time that might contribute to why the classic bike is used more so. All right, the recommendations. So introducing the plan, um, uh, introducing plans that might be more appealing to casual riders in the summer months, the marketing should be done during the winter months as there will be less likely uh, anyone using the service anyway. So you would want to just gear up and get people aware of the plans of whatever promos, promotions they may have. The casual users might be more interested in a membership option that allows for per use balance card, a punch card. Alternatively, the existing payment structure might be altered to, in order to make single use more costly to the casual riders, as well as lowering the long-term membership rate and or offering a discounted promotional rate. So of course, um, there is price flexibility for this company. So making changes to the pricing of the annual and lowering it, the barrier to entry, making that lower and more cost effective for what would be a casual rider, maybe someone who is a resident of the city, but was not necessarily sure to get into using the service on a long-term basis. And this might be catering to them. The membership rates specifically for the warmer months, as well as only riding on the weekends would assist in targeting casual riders as well. And that goes exactly back to what I just initially said that the plans for the summer and making sure that they cater to the warmer months as well as on the weekends might help to convert the casual riders who use it during those periods mostly um, in order to gain their, uh, have them switch over. All right, so things to consider what we were, of course, able to understand was that the report understands the scope of this analysis and is extremely limited and because of that fact, additional data as well as data points may have been able to contribute to the report. Um, and to give you more a more granular analysis and we don't have all of those data points, unfortunately, so this is as much as i'm able to uh, ascertain so things we would have appreciated that would be, uh, you know, to enable to enhance the data set that I have that was used. So um, providing age and gender um, dynamics would either, you know, would allow more targeted demographic lines, um, what has that affected the market specifically? Um, is there potential for more effective marketing from the marketing team to allow for people um, from around of all, you know, diverse, demographics to have access to the service, especially casuals. Um, the pricing structure, of course, we weren't given that as well. The actual pricing plans data was not provided. Um, so it would also be effective to have that aside so that we would be able to see what is the most um, popular option and by how much. 
Um, yes, and then of course, if there were more of a demands uh, section placed as well, um, that would allow for us to gear where their real needs and demands are in terms of their usage. If they're using it specifically to commute and or if they're using it specifically uh, to run errands. So those were things that would be added and would definitely help um, pinpoint. And then of course, household income data, pinpointing the average income of long-term households, as, which the, the, the typical economic standing would help uh, specifically to allow, uh, you know, to show price sensitivity, um, overall the ability for each household to, to contribute to the service and by how much and how much they are willing to part with. All right, so um, of course the data that was uh, used today was all sourced through uh, this service here. It can be found um, if you would like, you can get access to it. I have a link on this uh, in this presentation as well as for the, uh, in my notes in the notebook. And of course, thank you so much for your time. Um, if you'd like to get a hold of me and have any other follow up questions, don't hesitate to get a hold of me. Um, and I hope you enjoyed. All right. And thank you.